rasmussen's encephalitis when neurons turn against themselves what happens a very rare chronic inflammatory neurological disease that usually affects only one hemisphere of the brain characterized by intractable seizures loss of motor skills and speech hemiparesis and dementia is the result rasmussen's encephalitis also known as chronic focal encephalitis is a serious autoimmune disease that primarily affects children under the age of 10 but can also affect adolescents and adults affected children frequently enter a phase of permanent but stable neurological deficits after 8 to 12 months the disease in adults and adolescents may continue to progress slowly it is resistant to drug treatments and frequently requires surgical interventions aiming to remove or disconnect the affected part of the brain to control the seizures. Researchers from the University of Geneva and the Geneva University Hospitals have managed to manipulate the mechanisms underlying neuronal damage in Rasmussen's encephalitis, potentially paving the way for new treatments of the disease. It was previously thought that neurons were the target of immune system cells that attack synapses, the connections between neurons. A team of researchers led by Doron Merkler, associate professor in the Department of Pathology and Immunology at the University of Geneva, Faculty of Medicine and senior consultant in the Clinical Pathology Service of the Geneva University Hospitals, was able to show that neurons are not only passive victims of this attack but play an essential role in triggering a damaging defense immune mechanism that ultimately leads to their own damage. The study published in the journal Cell, on August 30, 2018. Giovanni Di Liberto, researcher in the Department of Pathology and Immunology at the University of Geneva Faculty of Medicine is the first author of the study. In Rasmussen encephalitis, like in other encephalitis, the presence of an antigen in the affected neurons triggers an immune system response, resulting in synaptic alterations. Following a viral attack, an antigen present on the neuron triggers CD8 plus T lymphocytes to produce a protein called IFNY, which is taken up by its receptor on the neuron. To fight against viral eye infections, the neuron produces a chemical signal to other cells called phagocytes which then attack the synapses. It's a sort of tripartite tango with tragic consequences. Subsequently neurons activate the STAT1 signaling pathway which leads to the production of a molecule called CCL2. The latter molecule diffuses into the neuronal environment where it activates other immune cell types, the phagocytes, which are microglial cells present in the brain and macrophages derived from the blood circulation. These two types of phagocytes finally attack the synapses. If we manage to cut off the signal emitted by the neuron, this whole cascade of causes and consequences could be blocked. A similar signaling signature was found in biopsies performed in more than 20 patients suffering from Rasmussen encephalitis, and researchers advocate that it is possibly identical for other forms of encephalitis also. In laboratory, this mechanism has been successfully blocked at different levels. The University of Geneva and the Geneva University Hospitals teams have thus succeeded in blocking the signaling pathway of STAT1 and CCL2 molecules, as well as the migration and activation of phagocytes by pharmacological interventions and genetic manipulation, avoiding in all these cases the degradation of synapses and allowing for a better control of the disease. Researchers will now have to partner to pursue the development of a possible treatment and conduct the necessary clinical trials, a difficult task when it comes to rare diseases. This modified T lymphocytes prevent nerve cell damage in encephalitis will probably work in other diseases that cause a strong immune response, and may even play a role in multiple sclerosis. Thank you.